कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा डियर डिवोटीज आप सबका स्वागत है आप सबका अभिनंदन है इन टूडेज क्लास ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम आज हम श्रीमद भागवत के स्टडी में विल कवर चैप्टर फाइव ऑफ कैंटर टू श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटर टू चैप्टर फाइव टाइटल है द कॉज ऑफ ऑल कॉसेस हरे कृष्णा प्लीज ज्वाइन एस फॉर जयराव धाम आदव प्रेयर्स जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरवर धारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरवर धारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुन तीरावन चारी यमुन तीरावन चारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरवर धारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरवर धारी यशोदानंदन व्रजन रंजन यशोदानंदन व्रजन रंजन यमुन तीरावन चारी यमुन तीरावन चारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari हरे कृष्णा डियर डिवोटीज आप सबका स्वागत है आप सबका अभिनंदन है इन टुडे स्टडी ऑफ श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटो टू चैप्टर 5 हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा डियर व्यूअर्स वेलकम आप सभी का स्वागत है भागवतम क्लास में दीनो तत्व प्रभु जी रोज श्रीमद् भागवतम क्लास में हमें बहुत ब्यूटीफुल लेसन शेयर करते हैं और जैसा कि हम सबको पता है श्रीमद् भागवत में वी लर्न अबाउट भगवान Does, uh, his activities, his forms, his pastimes. We learn about the exalted personalities, how they pray to Bhagwan, how they took shelter of Bhagwan. So, Jiva Tattva Prabhu Ji, today we are doing the chapter of Shrimad Bhagavatam, which is Canto 4, Chapter 5. Canto 2, Chapter 5. Canto 2, Chapter 5. And its title is The Cause of All Causes, Sarva Karan Karana. Hare Krishna. Or Jiva Tattva Prabhu Ji, about 45 minutes ki class. Yes, 35 to 45 minutes. Okay, after that, Diva Prabhu Ji will be taking your questions. If you have any questions, you can get answers. Please wait to put your questions till that time class is over because we will miss your questions otherwise. Go ahead Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please join us for Mangala Charan prayers. Together, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narutamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirye Shavratam Swakatha Krishna Punya Shavana Kirtanaha हृदयतस्तोह्य भद्राणी विधुनोति सुहसता नष्ट प्रायद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवतेम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवति नष्ट की हरे कृष्णा डियर डिवोटीज विल डाइव इन टू द लेसन राइट आफ्टर वी कवर द फर्स्ट वर्स एंड इट्स ट्रांसलेशन Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 5, The Cause of All Causes, Verse 1. Narad Uvacha, Deva Deva Namaste Astu, Bhuta Bhavana Purvaja, Tad Vigyani Yajgyanam, Atma Tattva Nidarshanam. Translation by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. Shri Narad Muni asked Brahmaji, O chief amongst the demigods, 
O first born living entity, I beg to offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Please tell me that transcendental knowledge which specifically directs one to the truth of the individual soul and the super soul. Hare Krishna, please join us for Guru Prati. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashat Dejitarine Om Ajnana Timrandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasme Shi Guruve Namaha Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langhayate Girim Yat Kripata Daham Vande Shi Gurum Deen Taranam Shi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shi Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. So, first off, in this very chapter, from the beginning itself, you know, we see the disciplic succession is being maintained, right? So, that has been identified. Because previously we heard that Lord Brahma received the knowledge from Lord Krishna. And we also heard that Vyasthi received knowledge from Narad Muni, Devashi Narad. So, what is the connection between Lord Brahma and Devashi Narad? So, this is where in the very first verse, Devashi Narad is revealing that his spiritual master is none other than Lord Brahma. So, Lord Krishna, as he refused to Arjun, that this knowledge, the spiritual knowledge is supposed to be gained in disciplic succession. So, in Bhagavad Gita, what does Lord Krishna says to Arjun? Evam param para praptam ibam raja shayo vidhu sa kale ne mehta yogo nashtaha parantapa. So again, that is where we understand that the knowledge is coming in parampara. Now, something very interesting is here. As we discuss that, you know, in a guru disciple relationship, the inquiry is very important, that we should, we should ask questions. But how to ask questions is also very important. And here, in this verse, the way to address the spiritual master is identified. Now, Devashi Narad is asking, please help me understand the relation between soul and super soul. But his, he is actually creating, just a bhoomi ka banate, right? He is creating a platform to come to an essential inquiry in the second and third verse of this chapter. So to come to that inquiry, he is not directly like asking. So reminds us of a very common incident where Srila Prabhupada, when he was giving a discourse at the university, and uh, you know, one of the students, he got up and he said, he asked this question in a challenging mood. Why do you have this marking on your forehead? So Srila Prabhupada pointed to his tie and said, why do you wear a tie? And this person, he looked at his tie and he could not answer. He just sat down. So afterwards, when he met with Srila Prabhupada, then he was very apologetic and he was very humble. So at that time, being merciful to him, Srila Prabhupada said that when you ask questions, you should ask in a humble mood, not in a challenging mood. That will benefit you more. So that is an essential aspect that we learn from the scriptures that a disciple is one who asks the questions in a submissive manner because he wants to acquire knowledge. Yet at the same time, when asking in a submissive manner, the question should be relevant to you know, an inquiry for spiritual progress. That should be a very important aspect. And the interesting thing is this, there are three kinds of personalities engaged in any discourse. The speaker is there, the preacher who is speaking, and in this particular case, like I am speaking, and then there is audience. You all are wonderful audience. So everybody benefits, and then the inquirer who asks questions. Now in Srimad 
Bhagavad, uh, Bhagavatam as well as in Bhagavad Gita, we see that Arjun is making inquiries in Bhagavad Gita. And it is most beneficial for the inquirer. When somebody inquires about a subject matter to know in a humble mood, in a mood to understand this spiritual knowledge, then it will benefit that person the most because they are identifying it to understand the subject matter. And so in a realized and better, uh, in better knowledge, they will be able to take to devotional service, devotional path, you know, with firm faith. Their faith will grow. And, you know, adoshadda tata, tata sadhu sangha atha bhajana kriya. So everything starts with faith. And when somebody has faith, a stronger faith, with better understanding, then they understand, you know, why something is being done. So otherwise, you know, back home in India, I means we were performing various kind of ceremonies, right, rituals, but without understanding why we are performing rituals. When I was a child, you know, parents, we would go with with parents, we would go to the temple, and uh, parents would say, you know, they would bow down. So initially, it was automatic, right, because our parents, our father and mothers, they are like the role models. So whatever they do, we do it. And if we don't understand why they are doing something, then they signal us, you know, pay obeisances. And we would immediately just follow them because following them keeps us in safe situation, right? They love us, they take care of us. The minimum thing we can do is follow them, their instructions. So this is what we used to do. So again, we should be humble. But at the same time, we do not understand why are we doing, you know, all the ritualistic activities. So that is not understanding the spirit behind, the essence behind, the knowledge that helps us understand, you know, the reason behind carrying out various kind of samskaras. Samskaras are impressions. So we get impressions. So when we understand the reason behind all these various aspects, then we realize, oh, it is for our benefit, it is for our purification. And not just our purification, but our elevation, right? We get elevated to a higher plane of understanding, higher plane of knowledge, higher plane of performing our activities with right consciousness. And that is an essential principle in Vedic knowledge. Vedas means knowledge. And from that perspective, this is an essential aspect that we should understand the spirit, the essence. So when we join spirit, the essence, the knowledge with the ritual, it becomes spiritual. You got it. So again, it is so interesting how everything comes together in our culture and everything has its purpose. Some of the aspects that we'll be covering today, you may very well be thinking that you may want to go back to your school and to your universities and ask for a refund, right? Because what the knowledge that you get by paying money, you know, it is, you know, motivated, a driven knowledge based on a lower uh, level of evidences that we see. So, again, before we jump down to that particular lower level of evidences, one of the important aspects is that a submissive inquiry from a bona fide spiritual master, it le leads to better knowledge. And the Vedas means knowledge. So from the Vedas, the knowledge, you know, was imparted. The Vedas were imparted to Lord Brahma through his heart by Lord Shri Krishna. And in Canto 2, we see this picture. So here we see that Lord Krishna is imparting the Vedas, the Vedic knowledge to Lord Brahma. And just by playing his flute, all the Vedas, they, you know, they are revealed to Lord Brahma and that's how Lord Brahma is acquiring this knowledge and what are the three evidences so let's jump to the three evidences and in this particular case Devishi Narad is using all those three evidences but he's actually taking the shelter of the final most important evidence so we learn it from him so here he's seeing that Lord Brahma he goes into meditation he's singing you know he's singing prayers to someone. Yet at the same time, he's performing some amazing, you know, creation in this material universe. So that's secondary creation. We understand, but this is what, you know, Devashi Naraj is seeing. So he has a Pratyaksha Praman. Pratyaksha Praman is an evidence by direct perception of the senses. 
he understands that aspect that he is seeing that you know lord brahma is you know meditating his invoking his various potencies so he is able to create the planets the different kind of living entities the creation of these various material worlds by using his potencies he has got so many potencies and as he is doing this you know devashinara this you know everyone all the living entities including indra and agni dev the fire god and also devigas they are just like amazed as a first entity how lord brahma is able to create as well as you know wonderful activities that he is able to perform and is the first living entity yet at the same time devashinara is also observing that he is going into meditation that means he is meditating on someone and when you think about like someone is meditating on another person so you won't be meditating on yourself and shila prabhupada identifies that those who try to worship themselves you know thinking that they want to become god by meditation then that is a bogus philosophy and the reason it is bogus philosophy that you don't become god you become godly and actually god is god he is always god you know lord krishna when he was newly born baby just you know around 10 days old he killed putana because he is god you know she was a demoness and you know when he was 7 years old he just lifted the whole govardhan hill so again that's another incident 6 year old incident so a god is god no matter what stage it is yet at the same time by serving god by pleasing god we acquire you know those qualities and we you know follow the principles of religion right so that we you know become pure so we become godly cleanliness is next to godliness so by becoming clean by becoming pure we become godly but we can never become god that is an essential aspect now coming to this point that narad ji one of the important aspect is he has a spiritual body that's also while lord brahma he is the first living entity and on top of that devashi narad is a liberated soul he is self realized that is also very important to understand and being self realized he understands what's what he even understands the concept of soul and super soul because he remembers it from his previous birth when he was a maid servant son and he had acquired this knowledge from the vedantas so various vedantists had imparted that knowledge when they were you know happy with his services when he was son of the maid servant so he had that knowledge preserved from previous day of lord brahma and now he is continuing to inquire about the same subject matter so it is very evident that he is aware of the question he is asking but what is the actual question he is asking so he is creating a ground because the next question the question he is asking if somebody just states that question without context then it may appear that they are challenging right it could be taken in a challenging mood because his question is going to be a very important question he is asking that you know based on my seeing that you are meditating on someone that you are praying to someone yet your energies are so amazing that you are you know engaged in this creation of this material universe you are creating this amazing planets and you are you know letting them float and all these wonderful things are going on in this material universe and you are the creator of in this material universe and devashina at this particular time doesn't know that there are other universes so again from that particular perspective he is focusing on this relationship and he is identifying yet at the same time i see you going meditation so i have this inquiry are you the one who is the supreme controller are you the one who is in you know in full control of the energies the source of all the potencies that you have and are you the one you know who is creating all this stuff or is there another controller above and beyond you right so again when somebody is in a very powerful state and you go to them and you say i see that you are very powerful but are you powerful on your own power or are you powerful because there is someone more powerful whose shelter you have taken and sometimes when you ask this kind of questions the person may get upset right and you know they may say oh this person is challenging my authority but that should not be the mood so for that we first have to glorify the person and then 
we should inquire that we see all these wonderful qualities that you have. Now, who is the source? You know, how are you able to do all that stuff? When you ask in this banner, then the person is able to understand. It reminds me of a very nice incident in astrology. He went to uh, Emperor Akbar one day. And uh, so Emperor Akbar asked me, tell me about, you know, the lifespan and some of those theories. So this astrologer, not a very good astrologer because his prediction did not come true, but the lesson is important, right? <laughs> the lesson is, he goes and says that actually, my dear uh, Japana, uh, right, Vash Akbar, you you will see all your family members will die in front of your eyes. Now, Agba became very angry. And he immediately re rebuked this astrologer. You know, almost he had to control his anger by saying that, you know, he's saying such a bad thing to me. He's telling me that I'll see every family member dying. And so he kicked, got him kicked out of the palace from the assembly hall. Now, afterwards, this astrologer approached Birbal. Now, Birbal is intelligent, right, of the Navratnas, of the nine, you know, great personalities in uh, Akbar's uh, assembly hall. He is an essential, uh, you know, he is known for his intelligence, for his, uh, you know, clever, quick responses. So, this astrologer, he met with Birbal. And at that time, Birbal advised him. What, what was the advice? Birbal said, you approached it from the wrong perspective. You did not focus on what is of interest, what is of need, what is that the audience wants to hear. And here, Maharaj Akbar, he is, you know, Bhashya Akbar, he is your main audience. And you are actually responding to his question. So if you respond in this manner, you may be telling truth, but then, it will come up as like a curse and it will not give a good feeling. And people remember how you make them feel. So that's why you got kicked out. Rather, you should apologize, go back and this time apologize for your oversight. And just say that, my dear Jahapana, you have a really long life. So by saying that, you are identifying that he has a really long life, especially long life in his family. So that, you know, he would feel good that yes, he has a really long life and he has, has a lot of wonderful events to see with his family members and he would be able to cherish wonderful, you know, family times and all those aspects. So now this astrologer goes and obeys, uh, you know, the instructions given and follows the instructions given by Birbal. And when, of course, Akbar hears that, oh, he has a really long life and he would have wonderful time with his family members and he will see how they are growing up, he will see how everything is being taken care of and how he is ruling very nicely, he becomes very happy. And awards, you know, gives various rewards to this astrologer. So, of course, astrologer is happy, Akbar is happy and Birbal is smiling. Now, the same message has been conveyed but with a different mood. So again, when we ask a question, the question should not just be asked in a humble mood, it should show humility. Our actions and our emotions and the feelings that we invoke from our inquiries should also show that how humbly we are asking and so that other person becomes inspired. And that is the great uh, you know, expertise we see here as Devashi Narad is asking, he is saying, Hey, I see Pratyaksha Pramana, my direct evidence is com look, look, coming from my senses is that I see you in meditation, I see you singing prayers, I see you praying to someone. I do not know that, right? No, no Anuman. Because he is not taking shelter of the second type of evidence. What is the second evidence? People have like, uh, they, you know, create inferences. So, okay, this happened, so that happened. So maybe it is so and so. They try to relate to different events, right? He is saying that Lord Brahma is praying, he is meditating, and then he goes and starts creating. So he could very well say, okay, I can do an Anuman that you are creating by your potency, but actually your potencies are because someone is imparting you this amazing potency, the ability to create. So that is an Anuman. But he is not using a hypothesis that, you know, by doing this, you are somehow 
increasing your chakra powers and somehow that chakra power is increasing so that you can perform all these activities. He's not doing that. He's still going to the most important type of evidence, which is Shabda Praman. He's inquiring from Lord Brahma, please, he's inquiring humbly, that please tell me, how are you able to do all these activities? How are you able to, you know, create everything? And, you know, is this your potency? Are you getting this potency, that ability? Are you getting the inspiration, the ability, the motivation, the very purpose of your life from someone else? And here, Lord Brahma, he is very happy. The way the question has been posed, right? Because he, this is invoking, this is giving an opportunity to remember his Lord, right? Whose mercy, by whose mercy he is able to perform his various activities. What does Lord Krishna say in Bhagavad Gita? He says, Parushan Nishu. And the ability in men. Lord Brahma is the first living entity. So when he is asked these questions, he is immediately remembering Lord Krishna, who imparted the Vedic knowledge to him, he imparted and gave him, you know, abilities to use Brahman Jyoti, which is like spreading the seeds in the universe, and then he is using those seeds by his watering process, his creative activities, you know, the creation activities that Lord Brahma does, is like a watering of the seeds that have been spread in this material universe by the Brahma Jyoti which is coming from the, which is nothing but bodily effulgence of Lord Shri Krishna. So again, it is like the sunshine where Lord Shri Krishna is the deity, right? And Paramatma in our heart is like the sun globe. So from that perspective, we understand, oh wow, this is amazing. So Lord Brahma is watching the seed. So Lord Brahma is revealing this. And he also reveals at a high level how that watering of seed happens. And this third evidence is most important because of you know of the three evidences. So what are the three evidences? First one is Prataksha Praman, coming from our senses. Second one is Anuman Praman. You know, people can relate things and come to some inference, you know, some kind of theory at that time, hypothesis. And then the third one is Shabda Praman, to inquire from higher authorities to tell about themselves. So this Shabda Praman is the most important one. Why is it the most important one and complete in itself? Because if we use just our senses, uh, just the Pratyaksh Praman to understand things, then our senses are limited, right? So in current times, our senses are limited, so people get infected. They don't want to get infected by coronavirus, but our senses are not strong enough. We cannot see coronavirus, we cannot smell coronavirus, we cannot understand when it has touched us so that we immediately, you know, disinfect us. So, that's imperfect senses. Another way is, when it goes dark at night, means there is no light, we cannot see anything. Right, in a dark room, if we are there, we can't even see our hands and legs. What to talk about things in the room. So, our senses are limited. So, with faulty senses, so again, there are four defects in this conditioned life that we experience. What are these? Limited senses is one of them. Then propensity to get delusioned, you know, we, when we try to do uh, Anuman Pramar, which is the second type, we try to relate things, you know, using uh, some kind of theory or hypothesis, then that's Anuman. And we have a propensity to get deluded, so that cannot be perfect. And on top of that, there is propensity to cheat. And this is called out to all the philosophers who give out various theories. So, you know, back in 2015, there was this theory post and which was highly regarded, you know, as a great theory by all the scientist community, which was like, if even if there is one extra atom comes through in this universe, the whole universe will get destroyed. Where is this theory coming from? What proof do you have? Have you seen a universe getting destroyed because there was an extra atom that appeared there? There is no proof. But some person thinking that he is very knowledgeable and he is making this inference and making this theory and people are accepting, yes, yes, very nice theory. Because sometimes they are just forced, understanding that this person is an authority, we can't really say anything against him because that will make us look bad, so they agree. So this is a scenario of a blind leading a blind. There is no basis behind these theories. And on top of that, human is we have tendency to make mistakes. 
So now, understanding these four defects of conditioned life, we should always go to the evidence, right? And this evidence is based on inquiry, inquiry from higher authority. And in disciplic succession, when we make inquiries, then the knowledge that has been coming directly from Lord Shri Krishna, we get to know, we get to understand, and we get to realize that knowledge. Somebody can give us the knowledge, but then how do we apply that knowledge is then essential principle, right? Somebody can hand you a manual of a car and now, you know, say, okay, now you know how to drive a car. But if you try to just use the manual and say, I have the, I have the knowledge, see, and you start to drive the car on the road, the cop will catch you and then punish you, you know, uh, you know they will fine you. And if they realize that actually you don't even know how to drive a car, you just happen to have a manual, you have the knowledge in the book of knowledge, then it's not really very beneficial for you. And uh, one of the important aspects that we see here is that we have to know how to apply that knowledge. Yes, manual tells you that this is how the various instruments are functioning. Now, why and when and how you have to function. So how it is telling that this is what you do to turn the lights on, this is what you do to turn the wipers on. But at night, if you don't turn the lights on and you turn the wipers on, it's not helping you because you can't see what's on the road and you may go off the road. So it is very important to understand that, yes, you have to turn the headlights on at night so you can see the road in front of us. And you don't want to turn the wipers on unless it is raining outside because everything has its purpose. You have to understand the purpose behind every single activity. Now, when we understand the purpose, then it becomes realized because now we are applying it in the right purpose. And this is where Lord Brahma is identifying that, you know, he is Lord's, you know, he's being empowered with that creative impetus by Lord Shri Krishna. So that's why he's doing creation. And creation requires that uh, mode of passion. So again, that's why he's also the controlling, you know, you know, the mode of passion. He's also said to be sometimes even uh, in mode of passion because that creative activity, but he's doing, using that creative activity in service of Lord Shri Krishna. So that is the glories of Lord Brahma because he's constantly engaged in serving Lord Shri Krishna. And similarly, when we see Rudra Dev, Lord Shiva, he is using his anger. Everybody talks about, yes, anger has his purpose. And everyone goes back to Bhagavad Gita and says, see, Arjun, he used his anger to uh, fight. When, when Lord Shiva, when becomes, he becomes angry, he starts dancing. And when we see someone dancing, we think, oh, the person must be very happy. And actually, Lord Shiva is using his anger to burn the whole universe, the various planets of this universe. Uh, so when Lord Brahma goes to sleep, then he does Tanda. And that's when the annihilation happens. And the universe is, you know, annihilated at the time till Lord Brahma wakes up. And his day and night, once again, they're of same size. So from that perspective, we hear that, oh, wow, you know, Rudra Dev, Lord Shiva, he is using the activities and these activities are normally in the mode of ignorance yet at the same time he is using those activities in service of Lord Shri Krishna. Vaishnava Nam Yatha Shambhu is the topmost Vaishnava. So all his activities are dovetailed in serving Lord Shri Krishna. When we understand from that perspective, oh wow, you know, Lord Shiva is actually serving Lord Shri Krishna and using all his activities, all his time in meditating and serving Lord Shri Krishna and engaging in devotional service. Even the activity of destruction of the universe is part of his devotional service. That is his prescribed duty aligned with his Sanatana Dharma, Swadharma aligned with his Sanatana Dharma, prescribed duty aligned with the constitutional position. Now, Lord Shiva is Shiv Tattva, much higher than Jeev Tattva. Lord Brahma is one of the Jeev Tattvas. So again, Devashi Narad, one of the Jeev Tattvas. So these are, and Jivera Sarupaya, Krishna and Nityada. So we all are Jeev Tattvas and our constitutional position, our Sanatana Dharma is to eternally serve Lord Shri Krishna. 
Krishna Nityadas, eternal servant of Lord Shri Krishna. So that is the mood. But as sadhikas, as practitioners, we engage in, you know, bhakti yoga. So we talked about that yesterday. As it is Kevalya Marg, right? This is the only process for self-realization of the absolute truth. And of the absolute truth, of the three absolute truths, the topmost is Lord Krishna, who is the cause of Paramatma, who is the cause of Brahma Jyoti, and he is the cause of all causes. Ishvaraha Paramaha Krishnaha Sachidananda Vigraha Anadira Adira Govindaha Sarva Karana Karanam Ishvara Parma Krishna. So he is the topmost controller, he is the supreme controller. Satchidanand Vigraha and his form is full of no, eternity, Sat, full of knowledge, Chit, and Ananda, full of transcendental bliss. Anadir Adir Govinda. There was no one, Anadir means there was no one who's older than him, older than Lord Krishna. And Adir Govinda, Adi means he is the oldest personality. Govinda, one who gives pleasure to the cows and who gives pleasure to the senses. Sarva Karan Karanam. He is the cause of all causes, and that is the title of this chapter. So, from that perspective, we hear how to acquire knowledge and not, you know, pose foolish theories. We should analyze it further. So, of the four, three types of evidences, Pratyaksha, Anuman, and Shabda, we may use these, but we should always take shelter of Shabda to realize that knowledge, to apply it and realize it. That is an essential principle. Now, tough questions when asked simply, it purifies us all, but it purifies most to the inquirer because they are going to apply directly. And now Devashi Narada is talking about an important question, which is that he is saying that as you are creating in this material universe, it appears just like a spider you know, it creates a network of cobweb, right? So when a spider creates a network of cobweb, so by your own potencies, it appears that you are creating. And Lord Brahma reveals that actually I am getting all these potencies from Lord Shri Krishna. And actually it is the Brahma Jyoti, the fulgence that is spreading the seeds. I am getting all the material from Lord Shri Krishna. And I am getting the knowledge of how to use the material in doing my service to Lord Shri Krishna and my service that I have been assigned is to create this material universe, various planets, various planetary systems and so forth, different kind of living entities, you know, their forms and so forth. So this is what he is revealing. Yet at the same time, he also understands that Devashi Nara's question is even higher, which was the title of previous chapter, the process of creation. His interest is that there are 14 planetary systems, right? Lower planets, middle level planets, and higher planets. So, how they are created, and how you know they are maintained, and what is the what are the related theories by various philosophers? Lord Brahma also talks about some theories by other philosophers that has also been discussed here. So, one of the important aspect is when uh, Devashi Narad is asking. We also talked about. Angraho Pashita, the idea of worshipping self to become God, right? Worshipping oneself as God to become God is false because we can only become godly. And uh, this process of Angraho Pashita can, is a process for self realization. Now, it is not a process of self realization because that would mean that this is the only process to, of self realization. It is a process of many processes. It is one of the process for self-realization. I am Brahmasmi. I am Brahman. But Lord Krishna, the, he explains a super soul in our heart and he is Parabrahman. He is even beyond Brahman. He is the cause of Brahman. Right? As we hear in this chapter again and again and also in Brahma Samhita that the effulgence is just coming from Lord Shri Krishna and he is the original source of all you know, activities and even of Brahman and Paramatma. So that particular aspect is very nicely explained. So from that perspective, we should understand that the, there are various processes for self-realization and Bhakti Yoga is the topmost process of self-realization.
And on top of that, the relationship, the question is about soul and super soul, their relationship as how they are connected is fully realized with Bhakti Yoga. Ashtanga Yoga, it is realized. And with Jnana Yoga, it is partially realized because the Jnana Yogi is thinking of Brahman Jyoti, which is like the uh, sunshine. And that is coming from sun globe. And sun globe is analogically identified with the Paramatma, the super soul in our heart. Now, Srila Prabhupada in the purport is explaining that in this material universe, we see the sun which is self-effulgent. You know, it's emanating the Jyoti, right? So we can refer to it, he used the word Brahma Jyoti. It's basically the light, sunshine is being referred here. And Lord Krishna says that of the universal form, you know, the eyes are sun and moon. So, you know, he is constantly seeing us. He is also constantly giving us life. Because all lives are sustained on this planet because of sunshine and moonlight. So those are essential principles that we should understand. One important aspect that comes in this particular chapter at this juncture is that as Lord Brahma is incited, then he starts with, you know, first glorifying Lord Shri Krishna. That it is from Lord Shri Krishna I get this knowledge. And now he is describing the process of creation. And here he gives a glimpse of the primary creation and secondary creation. He says that the primary creation happens in the three Vishnu avatar forms, right? The three Purusha avatars. Now, what are these Purusha avatars? He is saying that in the causal ocean, first the Lord he lays down. So, this is Mahavishnu's reference. So, he is saying in a Karana ocean, Lord lays down the Karanvasha in the waters and then he comes up and then from the pose of his body. So this is Karano Dakshai Vishnu Karanvasha. Karano Dakshai Vishnu, very easy causal ocean. And the Lord is the cause of all causes in this material universe. So he is Mahavishnu. So he is from the his breathing and from the pose of his body comes out various universes. And then he further expands into various Hiranyagarbha forms. So he expands Hiranyagarbha. Garbha means womb, which actually tells us Garbhodakshai Vishnu, right? So in each universe, he enters as Garbhodakshai Vishnu. And from the navel comes out this lotus stem and the flower on which Lord Brahma is born. Now, later on, in the next few chapters, Lord Brahma reveals that actually, you know, when he was born, he had similar inquiries. So he's revealing this to Devashina. So this chapter, it is not in this chapter that the question ends. The question, can, the response to that question, the answer to that question continues through many chapters in Srimad Bhagavatam. So here he is only giving an insight to at a higher level and then further he will dive deeper, right? First he wants to make sure is Devashina able to absorb. So based on the student, you know, it's like a sponge, but if the sponge is small, you cannot, it cannot absorb much water. So that knowledge should be given based on the receptive level of the audience as well. So he is giving that basic knowledge and hopefully when you will meditate on this particular layer of the knowledge, then in the next class and the next following classes, we will be able to go deeper into other subject matters. So here, you know, he is identifying. Uh, so uh, Lord Brahma is saying, that as Hirana Gabha is entering into each universe, and the Gabu Dakshai Vishnu, from him comes the lotus flower where Lord Brahma is born. He is born. And Lord Brahma's lifespan, right, 311 trillion years and 40 billion earthly years. So these are earthly years. Now they are, look like, wow, that's a really long time compared to our life. Yet at the same time, when we look at it, from Mahavishnu's perspective, that 311 trillion, 40 billion earthly years are just one breathing of Lord Mahavishnu, Karun Dakshai Vishnu. So it's not that great, but someone's just breathing once, and that exhalation and inhalation, that's all it is. So here, there is a beautiful picture of Devshi Narad inquiring from Lord Brahma, who's sitting on this lotus flower that is born from the you know, navel of uh, Garbhodakshai Vishnu. And then further, Lord expands as Shirodakshai Vishnu. 
to do the maintenance of this secondary universe. So this individual universe where the creation is happening, this is secondary creation by Lord Brahma, where the maintenance is done by Shri Daksha Vishnu, who is in everyone's heart, right, as Paramatma. So he is our overseer and permitter, and that's how he maintains this material universe. And Lord Shiva, he takes care of the annihilation. And the way you should look at annihilation is not destruction. You should look at it as recycling. So then the elements, they merge back and again they are available when Lord Brahma wakes up. They are available for Lord Brahma to start doing another creation. So it's like a Lego game, right? Sometimes this is where we were kind of like thinking. People, kids were, you know, making different, different uh, figurines with using Lego games, uh, Lego pieces. And when they made like different kind of dolls, then for some time they engaged in playing with each other using these various figurines. And after that, you know, as they were getting ready to, you know, end the game, at that time, they all just took all those parts separately, put them in different sections, closed the box, so that next time when they, you know, want to play, they can again open the box and everything is very nicely arranged. So you can start, so recycling, you know, preparing for the next creation cycle. That's how we should look at Lord Shiva's activities. Because the purpose is for living entities in this material world, either the ones who are trying to enjoy and lord over this material nature, they would be, you know, trying to satisfy themselves, their senses, or the ones who have realized that there is no happiness, right? Then they will be able to use the same material universe, material world, to go back home, back to Godhead, which is just like you know, taking out a thorn with a thorn, right? We have received this material body and with this material body itself, you know, which is the conditioning, we are able to get out of this material universe. So from that perspective we hear, so again there is also another picture shown here of uh, Lord Shri Krishna from whom his expansion is Mahavishnu, Karu Dakshai Vishnu, from whose body Various universes they are coming out as Lord Brahma explains, and he goes deeper into this particular subject matter. Now, when we talk about this, now we'll be talking about some of the important uh, lessons which will make you feel that you should ask for a refund from your teachers, from your school uh, authorities, or dean of your college. Uh, in Bhagavad Gita, there is one important aspect. Lord Krishna says, Shabda ke Parusham Nishu, Shabda ke. So, the sound vibration, it travels not in air, it travels in ether, sky. So that is an essential aspect. In our, you know, engineering or also in science classes, they always taught us, hey, the sound, is, it travels in air, you know, it travels in waves. Uh, not true, it travels in ether. And that's one of the proof that currently, even though there is no air in the space, they are able to do various transmissions to various satellites and even to the satellites around Mars, you know. And so they themselves are using this knowledge, but not realizing it, not even understanding it properly. So that reveals to us that that is, uh, you know, they have limited understanding. So here, Lord Brahma is revealing that he gets all the ingredients from Brahma Jyoti. And then from the Mahat Tattva, as it is, he is creating the basic ingredients have been given, Earth, water, fire, air, ether. So now, this is also very important that he is identifying how these various elements are created. When agitated by the, the Pradhan energy of the Lord, which is his, you know, uh, female potency, and he, Lord Karadaksha Vishnu, he uh, glances at this energy, it gets uh, agitated, and the three modes of material nature are born. And from there, you know, we see the mode of uh, the ego, the intelligence, mind, and other elements. But before that comes uh, an essential aspect, the material elements. But how they form? So first, as the sky is formed, again, false ego, mind, intelligence are there. Then comes the sky. When the sky, and then Lord, he actually enters into each of those. So he enters into the sky. So Shri Daksha Vishnu, he enters even the spaces between the atoms. So he enters into ether. Ether is the sky. So as he enters into ether, there is one quality that comes up. What is that potency? Sound. So Shabda Ke Parishram 
So sound does not travel in air as they taught us in school. It travels in ether. And example is all this uh, transmission to, to various satellites beyond our atmosphere is being carried out because of uh, the ability. So sound comes from ether. And now further, you know, there is a transformation that takes place and comes next is air. And with air comes touch. So somebody says you can't touch here. Well, you can just wave your hand and you can see that the, you are actually pushing your hand and your skin can sense that touch. So skin senses touch because it is coming because of air. So air allows you. Now from air further, and so as whatever is the cause, it enters into the effect of whatever is being caused by that cause. So there is ether in air. And so air acquires this new quality of touch as well as sound. That's why when they say that you know sound travels in air, they have only have partial information. That is only one of the quality. There are more than that. Now, from that comes fire. From air comes fire. So fire has air, which is the you know again sense of touch. So when you touch fire, you immediately realize it, and you try to you know withdraw yourself back away from fire. And similarly, it also has the potency of sound as because it also has ether as well as air in it and as fire is there it creates form now form comes because of fire in our vedic culture and even in our general talk we always say if somebody is losing their eyesight right in english we said someone is losing their eyesight nobody is paying attention that we are talking about sight sight is the power of seeing but hum log hindi mein kya bolte hain ki aankh ki jyoti nam ho rahi hai right aankhon ki jyoti chali gayi we are talking about fire fire gives the ability of seeing forms so the forms to be able to see different forms comes from fire and that is you know related to our senses as eyes so eyes are the senses where with our eyes we can see different kind of forms and now from fires further, so again it has uh, the ability to see forms come from fire. And because there is air, there is ether, it also has the potency of uh, touch as well as sound. Now from uh, fire comes water. Raso aham apusu kaunteya. Lord Krishna is revealing to Arjun that I am the taste in water. But in school they taught us that the water is tasteless. How could it be tasteless when Lord Krishna himself is saying Raso Aham Apsu I am the taste of water. So from water comes the taste. So all different kind of things that we can taste. It is only possible when it is mixed with water, liquid. So liquid elements, they automatically have taste. And when we take something in our mouth, we don't taste it until unless the saliva mixes with it. And it is the water that invokes that sense of taste. So we can, you know, taste things and we can understand what it tastes like. Is it bitter? Is it, you know, spicy? Is, is it, uh, you know, uh, hot? Or is it, uh, you know, uh, sweet? Or is it salty? All these different kinds of tastes, we can see that. But the taste buds can only sense it if there is water. Presence of water will enable that. And then finally comes earth. So from water finally comes earth. And earth has smell. So this is where we understand. It is already built into our culture where people can relate as how different things are happening. So again, uh, the Mahavishnu's, the way the material world is created uh, from, you know, false ego is in the mode of ignorance. Mind, you will be surprised to hear, is in the mode of goodness. It is intelligence which is in the mode of intelligence, uh, passion. So in the mode of passion, Lord Brahma is doing creation. So again, that requires passion. So this is where intelligence is used, right? So intelligence to, uh, you know, causes this creative impetus for us to find solutions. That requires intelligence to be able to seek solutions and uh, share solutions and so forth. That intelligence is in the mode of passion. And 
when we are maintaining something, it is in all those activities of maintenance are apparently in the mode of goodness. And finally, we have destruction, which is, you know, of wrapping things out, destroying things, that is in the mode of ignorance. So, these are some of the important lessons I wanted to share today. If there are any other questions, please let me know. But what is the more important is that we should take to Shabda Praman and not use Koop Manduk logic. Right? So, Lord Krishna is the cause of all causes. Lord Brahma has given a glimpse in this particular chapter and he will be diving deeper into those explanations. And uh, what is Koop Manduk logic, right? That is uh, a frog's logic who lives in a well. Koop means a well, Manduk is a frog. And this is a story that comes in the scriptures about a frog who was living in a well and suddenly he meets a frog that has come from the sea. Actually, you never see a frog in the sea. So, from the story perspective, it's given. So, this frog who was grown up in the well, he is trying to predict, you know, how big, big the well is. That's all he has seen all his life. So, when a frog from the sea comes and he asks, he says, I have come from the sea. And so, the frog in the well, he says, how big is the sea? Is it as big as this frog? And the frog from the sea saying, are you crazy? It is much bigger. So, you know, this frog is jumping from one end to another. Is it that long? Is it that wide? And the other frog is like surprised. This doesn't make sense. It is much bigger. Sea is huge. This well is small. So, this frog actually defies the frog from the sea. He says, oh, you are just a liar. Throw him away. You know, they discard. And this is what happens. And when we talk about the Shastras and the knowledge coming from Shastras, the philosophers, they become insecure, right? Because they have taken all your money to teach you all the knowledge and this knowledge is partial, right? It's not full knowledge. So, they become very highly insecure and, you know, they become jealous of spiritual people. They become uh, anti towards this and they try to, you know, become a theist by saying, I don't want to believe this knowledge. And being in powerful positions, they try to influence general populace, innocent populace. And when innocent populace follows such scholars, it actually causes the fall down. So, again, we should take the knowledge with the right perspective, which means we should approach a Sarvagya. Sarvagya means the one who knows everything. Sarvagya. Gya means one who has knowledge. And Sarva means of all subject matters. And the most important knowledge is the knowledge of soul and the super soul, which is the original question of Devashi Narad. And the cause of all causes is Lashya Krishna. Ishvara Parma Krishna Satchidananda Vigraha Anadira Adira Govindaha Sarva Karan Karanam. So this is also one of the important aspects Srila Prabhupada reveals as that we, as we hear the knowledge, as we understand it, as we apply it and finally realize it, it doesn't just end there. We should preach it. So we should not be a fruitless, you know, uh, seedless fruits. So in current times, we see that, you know, these various hybrid products that they are coming out, just so that people don't get disturbed that there is a seed in the orange, so they make seedless orange. There is no seed in the grapes, they make seedless grapes. But in reality, it is the seeds are required with a purpose that they would lead for future plants, future growth, future trees to be sown, and those will provide more fruits. So that should be our mood. We should also understand from the Shastras that we should all be, you know, sharing the seeds, sharing the knowledge that we have acquired. And that knowledge is the Vedic knowledge that we are hearing from scriptures. One another thing I do want to share is that in the school they taught us that there are two motions of earth planet, right? One it revolves around the sun, one it rotates on its axis. And in the Shastras we hear that actually there are three movements. One is it rotates on its axis, second is it revolves around the sun, and third is actually it axis also uh, revolves around a perpendicular axis to the sun, right? So as the direction of the sun, there is a perpendicular axis and we know that earth is tilted around 8 degrees. So, actually, this particular rotation of 8 degrees, which is going on, and we have practical experience of this. Right? Uh, so, that, that used to go like in a circle, and then it would fall out. So, that rotation 
takes 83,500 years. Now you could very well say, wait a minute, they taught us, you know, wrong. Well, they taught us partial. They did not teach us the complete truth because they don't know. They did not approach. They did anuman. You know, they use protection anuman. They are always doing this. They are seeing things based on the senses or the instruments made from the senses to expand. You know, further expansion of senses. But senses are limited. That's one of the defect of this current age. So they are trying to draw inferences using the observations without realizing what is hidden or without realizing that you know they are missing out even in their perception so that's why we save much time and energy when we take to shabda pramana so that is an important aspect today hari krishna if you do have any questions please ask hari krishna dear viewers prabhu ji ne aaj class jo di hai wo hai shrimad bhagavatam canto 2 chapter 5 krishna the cause of all causes or uh, is particular chapter may copy technical uh, you know the people who cannot uh, easily understand you know creation subject creation yes. topics all this uh, discussions have started shukdev goswami ji is giving this knowledge to yes. parikshit maharaj so if you have any doubts and questions you can ask your questions now uh, prabhu ji ne bataya how we can understand that bhagwan is the cause of all causes happening in the creation and uh, i would like to welcome new people on our bhagavatam classes dilip singh guraiya ji krishna. hari krishna yesh vinan vishwanathan ji geeta lod ji hari bol karuna sindhu prabhu ji hari krishna hari krishna so karuna sindhu prabhu ji has posted one question yes krishna is the cause of all causes so yes. is he also the cause of our sufferings how do we understand this hari krishna we should understand that he is our cause not the cause of our sufferings he is completely detached it's like shila prabhupada gave a very nice example where if a criminal is you know taken in front of a judge and the judge punishes the criminal criminal then the judge is not at fault he is completely detached he is making a ruling based on the activities of the criminal so when we don't follow lord's instructions right when we don't follow what has been provided to us and we act unjustly if we perform sinful activities then we get punished so the, our sufferings are the cause of our own activities that we have performed yet at the same time we who is our cause lord krishna the lord krishna created us for his pleasure so that we can be happy and he can be happy yet at the same time he gave us this minute independence because love cannot be you know forced so he gave us this minute independence and we are misusing that independence that freedom that we have received that minute freedom that we have received and when we misuse that minute freedom we cause our own sufferings but he is the cause by whose you know he is the cause of us being in existence yet he is completely detached he is an overseer and permitter he is constantly seeing whatever is going on in our heart and the various evidences right the sky is an evidence the time is an evidence and of course yamraj has a secretary whose name is chitra gupt right chitra means the one who picture chitra means picture gupt means all the secret pictures so he has all the secret pictures of all the activities that we have done he has complete record with detail all evidences are there not like the material uh, scenario where a you know, lawmaker has to go out and search for evidences he already has all the evidences so lord krishna is completely detached and yet at the same time he is waiting for us to become happy and our happiness lies in surrendering to him and all our sufferings are the cause of our own actions hopefully this answers your question hari krishna hari krishna karuna sindhu prabhu ji that was a nice question uh prabhu ji gave us very good insight on how one is cause for us to uh, take this you know um, experience and opportunity uh, to go through good and bad days so that we can understand yes. our sufferings are caused by our actions um so karuna sindhu prabhu ji has actually one more question hare krishna karuna sindhu prabhu thank you prabhu ji how can we utilize these teachings you have shared today Hare Krishna. Most important is 
what the knowledge has been shared is like you know is coming from the books right and these books are the books that have been this is containing the transcendental knowledge we have to apply this knowledge we have to first understand the knowledge then apply it in our lives and the best way to apply it in our life is standing with the chanting of the holy name hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare 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 krishna is maha mantra it is a call it's a transcendental sound vibration that we are calling out in a prayerful mood to the lord shiv his internal potency is aladini shakti radha rani our mother that my dear mother hara hara when called out lovingly is becomes hare my dear mother hare my dear lord shri krishna my dear lord ram please engage me in your devotional service so we are calling out to the couple that please engage us our father and mother to please engage us in their devotional service so we are calling that out and so the result is we get sadha sanga and then we engage in bhajan kriya devotional service and that's where we experience you know purification anartha nivrati syat so that we start to have nishtha stronger faith and with that nishtha comes our shakti so again we grow on our spiritual journey all the way to prem where we are able to attain the final abode attain lord shri krishna hopefully this answers your question Hare Krishna, Karuna Sindhu Prabhu. Uh, so Prabhu ji, I don't see any more questions, yes. but I would like you to discuss about one topic which we can't get enough of uh, in Shramanam <laughs> and which is helpful for all levels of devotees and time to time we need to just keep reading about it, reminding. Can you please share uh, how devotional service helps us, uh, you know, coming closer to Krishna and in very brief can you tell us what are the most important types of devotional service so that this is like a refresher for all the new people who are just joining who may have missed the class and who are, who are trying to understand you know knowing that krishna is cause of all causes what are the next steps they should take to come closer to krishna hare krishna so there are nine process of devotional service of them the most important is hearing shravan there are 64 limbs of devotion service as given by Srila Rupa Goswami. Of them, there are five most potent ones that even newcomer can experience that ecstasy, the transcendental ecstasy, the prema, right, of Lord Shri Krishna. So, the uh, 64 may say, these top five are reading Srimad Bhagavatam. So, we are doing a study of Srimad Bhagavatam. So, this is one of those most potent forms. Then, worshipping deity. Srimad Bhagavatam is literary incarnation of Lord Shri Krishna. So again, when we are studying, when we are hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, then we are worshipping the Lord by our intelligence. And wherever there is Lord, that place becomes Dham. So you can make, have Srimad Bhagavatam at your home, read it regularly and also make it your Dham. So this is also very important. The third one is staying at a Dham. So ultimately we are staying at a Dham. Fourth one is chanting of the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And last but not the least is devotee association. All the activities should be performed in the association of devotees. And even in this pandemic times, we have the association of family members. So we should gather as a family and Engage in devotional service that will benefit all of us unlimitedly. Right? Satatam kirti yantomam yatam tasya drunavrataha. So we can do it eternally. And the mood is also very important when we engage. Hare Krishna. Hopefully this answers the question. Hare Krishna. So we do not have any more questions today. Yes. Hare Krishna, Gantra, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Srila Bhagavatpada ki jai, Anant Kodivashram Vind ki jai, Nitai Go Premanande, Hari Hari Bol. Please join us for Nasima Devati. Hare Krishna. Namaste Narasinghaya Namaste Narasinghaya 
प्रहलाद लाद दाई ने प्रहलाद लाद दाई ने हिरण्या काशी पूर्वक्ष हिरण्या काशी पूर्वक्ष शिला टंका नकालाए शिला टंका नकालाए ये तो न सिंघो पर तो न सिंघो ये तो न सिंघो पर तो न सिंघो ये तो ये तो यामी तो न सिंघो ये तो ये तो यामी तो न सिंघो बाहे न सिंघो रिदाये न सिंघो बाहे न सिंघो रिदाये न सिंघो नरसिंगा मधिम शरणम प्रपद्ये नरसिंगा मधिम शरणम प्रपद्ये तव कर कमल वरे न काम अद्भुत शिंगाम दलिता हिरण्य काशिपु तानो ब्रिंगाम केशवधीता नरहरि रूपा जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे तव कर कमल वरे न काम अद्भुत शिंगाम दलिता हिरण्य काशिपु तानो ब्रिंगाम केशवधीता नरहरि रूपा जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय नसिंह देव 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 जय प्रलाद महाराज 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 जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय जय प्रभु पाद जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय जय प्रभु पाद जय जय गुरुदेव 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 जय जय गुरुदेव जय जय गुरुदेव 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 जय जय गुरुदेव नित गौर हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल नित गौर हरि बोल नित गौर हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल नित गौर हरि बोल भक्त विघ्न नाशिक नरसिंह देव भगवान की जय प्रहलाद महाराज की जय शिला प्रभुपाद की जय शिला भगवत पाद की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव विंद की जय निताय गो प्रेम आनंदे हरि हरि बोल हरे कृष्णा